Hi, my name is Benedict. Today's video might take some of you by surprise. It's about how a lot of the things that we've been taught to believe about what makes good music and how we make good music, how we make tracks that are going to sound great, is actually a lie. The reality is, if we take a good piece of music, we can strip it right back and it'll still work. Proof of that uh, is that it used to be almost any time we went out to a coffee shop on a Sunday afternoon, there'd be a duo there, or maybe even just one person strumming an acoustic guitar and singing a song. And sooner or later, they started to sing songs that we know real well. Hotel California or, or uh, something like that. Maybe a Pink Floyd song. Uh, and the song still worked. Yes, it might have been really annoying that their guitar was just muddy as hell because they were trying to make it sound like a bass. Sad. Uh, it may have been that they couldn't sing in tune, uh, but you know what? That song still worked, even though it wasn't super well delivered. The reality is, contrary to the popular belief, you do not need the right processing vocal chain to get there. Stevie Nicks is still a good singer, regardless of her, her vocal processing chain. What if we were to take a piece of music and hear it without any production whatsoever? Will it still work? Here's one I prepared earlier. This is the piece of music that was written. Please, this is not about whether you like this piece of music, whether it's your style. If you're thinking that way, oh, this can't be relevant because it's not my style of music, then you're right deep in the rabbit hole that I'm pointing out. A simple motif, we move into a pad. think at this point, yeah, well, Benedict, that all works because it's all nicely produced and it's well balanced and it's nicely mixed and, oh, I can hear you use the compressor on that bass sound so it's nice and even. Yeah, yeah, but what if? here is nothing but sine waves. To give you a sense of, of what's really there, to be super fair, 
you're hearing still the reverb and you're hearing uh, some stereo panning. Let's get rid of those. So there is zero production here. There is no particular compression. There's a little bit across the, the bus here just because sine waves are prone to, to getting a little loud. And I'd already got the mastering for this, so I needed to fit them within the existing mastering a little bit backwards, but needs must. Here, how we can still hear that piece, it still works. Could almost be a Mort Garson record, something like um, uh, Music the Plants. Musically, this works. Which means that as we add production value to it, even just panning, and now reverb, it actually all still works. point here is very much not to say look how clever I am but that we can take any good quality piece of work and again I'll go back and say let's let's look at classics things that we know are good quality not like oh I like that therefore it must be good stuff that we know is provably good quality say Abba's Dancing Queen provably good quality because you can play it at just about any any disco and people will suddenly be like it works so we could take that, we could put it into MIDI and use nothing but sine waves and it would still work. We could have um, sine waves to play um, uh, Agnetha and Frieda's lines, then vocal lines, and it'll still work. Okay, it may not be the same <laughs> as what we're used to as the 7 inch, but it's still going to work because it's a good piece of music. Uh, so rather than when you approach writing a piece of music thinking oh but i need the right sounds i've got to have the hooveriest of hoover and oh no there's a there's a 1k frequency in there i need to notch that out that means we're off track already nobody's interested in your hoover i know you think they are and in forums everyone will go on and on about the hoover and oh no i can hear 1k in your hoover it has to go because you have no idea what you're doing is not professional it's like yeah the reality is, you could write a good piece of music actually like this. This ended up coming in second. I copied the MIDI across and created a whole lot of Thors using nothing but sine waves. And yeah, bingo, there we are. But there's no reason that I couldn't have actually composed all of this using nothing but sine waves. That's kind of the equivalent of Mozart sitting there with, uh, with a piece of paper. Or of Ludwig van, who was actually towards the end couldn't hear what he was dotting out on paper but he could still write better music than most of us probably put together so rather than thinking oh but i have to have the right sounds and i have to produce them the right way which is really getting in your way and and i hear so much music that's well it's just obvious what they were doing which was not actually telling a story my baby done left me it's like oh we have to have the right bass and we have to have the right guitar sound and by the time they've got to the vocals uh it's it's a mishmash of cliches that they've taken out of somebody else's song my baby done shake it off shake it off oh yes she done shake it off shake it off that's like ill there's no point to that no point to that at all. I know you might feel like you were being emo and... But you know what? It won't go anywhere. It won't win on Spotify. Matter of fact, virtually nothing you do will win on Spotify because you don't have a financial backer telling people to like your stuff. So you got to play that different game, which is deliver tracks that are so powerful that if they were nothing but sine waves, people could still go, you know what? That's a nice piece of music. I relate to that. I can hear what you're telling me in this even though they can't actually tell you that they can hear what they're telling you when people listen to abba's dancing queen they're actually feeling what 
Bjorn and Benny were writing about and what the what their wives were expressing. I think they were wives at that time, but what the women were expressing as they sung. You know, it's getting to midnight and I could use me a man or a woman, whatever, works whoever. Uh, so the idea here is that you can focus on production values and take yourself right off track. You can achieve the very same thing. With absolutely no production whatsoever. And then as you add the production, it opens up. Its real power starts to come through. Its real beauty starts to come through there. Because it's a fundamentally sound piece in the first place. As a mix engineer, if somebody sends me a, a vocal which is busted, and by busted I don't mean sounds like Lou Reed, by busted I mean they can't sing in time, they can't sing in tune, but most importantly, they sound like they're terrified of what they're singing. Terrified of themselves. Not in a cool Freddy Krueger kind of a way, but just like, oh, I'm so dope, I'm the hippest of the hip people. That's not going to bother Eminem at all. I mean, he might roll on the floor laughing, but it's not going to work. So rather than doing something that's busted, do something that works, and then we can beautify it. If you send me a vocal that's busted, I can't beautify it. If you send me a vocal that's interesting, as in it's out of tune and out of time, but you've got good power in yourself, your story, your message, I can make that beautiful. We may do it in an unusual way, preferably without auto-tune, because auto-tune makes very little beautiful. It actually hides more than, than it brings out. And I'm not the only person that says that. I watched a video from a fellow from SOS the other day, um, um, Sound on Sound magazine. And he, he has done, I don't know whether he's still doing them, but he did a, a series of videos which are really quite good, about like aimed at the smaller studio owner, the project studio owner. And, um, and he talked about that. He said, you know, if you've got a singer who really then while it's tempting for people to pull them back in the mix and go, I'll hide it, all you've got is audiences leaning in to hear a bad singer. Ugh. Make a feature of it. He said, like, if they're not a particularly good singer, push them forward, make a feature of that. Don't hide it. And that's always been my ethos. Is like, if this singer is not great, wonderful. Let's make a feature of that. Make it obvious. Worked for Bob Dylan, worked for Lou Reed, worked for Johnny Cash when he was older. Um, kind of worked for Johnny Cash, <laughs> Dwight Yoakam, all these people who don't really have particularly lovely voices, but you know what? Awesome singers. Uh, so don't hide things away. You're looking to make them beautiful. If you're weak on something, either hire someone in to do it. You know, if you realize that you really can't sing at all, find someone who can sing. Don't worry about whether they can sing in tune or time. Find someone who can rip your little heart out. That's, that's your singer right there and then. Um, and the other thing that he said, which is very, very true, uh, is that when you're working in a project studio, you often have to do a lot of fix work, reconstruction work. Your bass player is probably so uneven in his, in his tone and what have you, and possibly even his timing, that you're going to use compressors and side chains and this, that and the other to try to make him sound like he's not as bad as he really is. Yeah, but What's true is that when you go into working with true professionals, really good people, there's a George Jones record I've got, 10 hits I missed and one I didn't, and he sings songs that he was offered and he turned down and they went off and became hits for Alan Jackson and people like that. And Keith Steggles, the engineer on that one, youngish guy, uh, up against George Jones, who by then was an oldish guy, and uh, it's a beautiful record. And you can tell that you don't hear anything that resembles mixing in there. It's wonderful. And part of the reason that Keith Stable got chosen for that is because he was known for not messing with the work. He's used to working with good artists. And so he trusts that what the artists give them is the right performance. And 
he lays it out and as a result it is beautiful it is not immediately like oh listen to the look and listen to those tricks oh i can hear something that somebody told me about in tips and tricks it's just beautiful because we've got george jones telling us those stories about how he you know he left moved up north to to detroit and and uh keeps writing letters down to his family about how well he's doing with his music career in Detroit. But in uh, in reality, he's working on a car production line and he just wants to go home. Great song, because it's a good song, like a really good song, and wonderfully delivered by a tremendous performer backed by really good players. So in terms of the mix, there's none of this like, oh, I've got to do tips and tricks and be fancy. All you've got to do is not mess it up. All you to do is bring the beauty out that's there. So if you're writing your own stuff and you're writing, let's say you're writing something and you're using a bass sound that doesn't work properly, fix it. Not by tips and tricks of produceriness, because as you hear in here, I've got a bass sound. <laughs> a little bit more at the end. And it still works just as well when we take all the production off it. Yes, the production lets us have a bit more control. It is nicer when it's produced, but it's still working. So if your bass is not delivering the results you want, it just means that you've probably written the wrong thing. There's something musically broken about it. That's the number one thing to look at. Is it musically broken? Um, or number two, you've just got the wrong sound. You just don't understand what the instrument is supposed to be. And either bring in somebody who knows what they're doing, an expert, to help you get the right sounds, or fix your composition, which is that maybe you're not playing the right things at the right time, maybe your notes are just busted, and it won't matter if they're busted, you'll never be able to fix them. You might come up with a trick that you think is really clever, but when it gets out into the market, when you ask audiences to hear it, they're just going to go, buddy, that's busted. Don't want to tell you that, but that's what's going to happen. So focus on the priorities, because when you get all the basics right, everything flows through. It's easy as that. Look how, again, if we take this... Get rid of our uh, reverb, get rid of our panning. We've got a perfectly functioning piece of music. we can do exactly the same on the other end. the beauty in the music when the beauty is already there and a good way of checking to know if that beauty is already there is to know if it's going to work let's rewind a little bit If 
it's going to work this way, we know we've got a nice piece of music. Our job is then just to have the beauty out of it. So here there, there's this swell, there's this... And that's just bringing the beauty out in the music. Now, hopefully you've really understood this. It's a interesting concept and it's a complete opposite of what almost everyone else is telling you very deliberately not trying to be contrary but just really pointing out that so much of what the problems that people are having are because they listen to what people tell them and it's broken so we can fix that by well doing it the way we should which is the equivalent of going back to writing your whole piece of music on a piano or getting the basics done on a piano or getting the basics done on an acoustic guitar even though you know it's going to be played with a mini moog or a prophet or a whatever you know because that really doesn't matter no one actually cares what instrument you're using apart from other people in forums who guess what never buy your music anyway so focus on getting a great story and start with something that's going to work going to have that beauty there then as you produce it it's a case of bringing out the beauty any questions ask them down below. If you want to hire me to help you bring out the beauty, whether that's in helping you to, to build and arrange your piece, uh, to work with putting the right sounds in it, or to mix, please talk to me. You have a good day now.